we have three reboot brains. Can you name them? Which one do you think we're focusing on this fortnight? That's right, it's the emotional brain. Let's have a closer look. The emotional brain is the limbic brain. Let's have a look and see what parts are in the limbic brain. In our limbic system, we have the hippocampus, we have the amygdala, which we talked about last week, and the hypothalamus and the thalamus. Let's see what these different parts do in our brain. The emotional brain is home to the amygdala. Our amygdala is our smoke detector or our protective warrior. We spoke last fortnight about how it keeps us safe by alerting us to potential danger and activating our wild brain responses. However, sometimes our amygdala thinks things are unsafe when actually they might just be new, difficult or different. The emotional brain is also home to the hippocampus, which is responsible for helping us make and store memories. Did you see that in the picture of the brain earlier? The other section of the emotional brain is called the diencephalon, which is responsible for sending information to other parts of the body to keep us healthy and control our body functions. This is the hypothalamus and the thalamus part of our brain from our earlier picture. To keep our emotional brain functioning, it is important that we actively feed it just like we do with our wild brain. When our emotional brain needs feeding, it can make us feel sad, bored, unmotivated and make it hard to make new learning pathways. Let's look at some ways that we can feed our emotional brain when it takes control. Okay. I'm so sad. Uh, I think I might go and find someone to play with. Oh, Miss Baker, can I play with you? Oh, of course you can, Miss Brown. Do you want to play handball? I love handball. Let's go for it. Oh, I double bounced it. Oh, that was a good shot. How was Miss Brown feeling? What strategy did she choose? Did that strategy work for her? Spending time with a friend or someone who is special to us helps feed our emotional brain and gets us feeling better and helps us be able to use our smart brain again. Do I want to do journal writing, get a drink maybe? You know what, I'm going to get a stuffed toy and give it a big cuddle. <gasps> I like sloths, I'm going to cuddle my sloths. How was Miss Baker feeling? How did you know? What did Miss Baker do to help her move out of emotional brain? What areas do you have in your classroom that you could use when you're feeling like this? Hey, Miss Brown, what are you grateful for? What did you paint? Uh, I painted a dinosaur. I am really grateful that dinosaurs, A, were born, and B, aren't here anymore. <gasps> That's amazing. Do you want to see mine? What are you grateful for, Miss Baker? I said that I'm grateful for my class because I think that my class is really wonderful. And we talk about how it's always so bright and colourful. And I like that, like, everyone added themselves to the bottom. I am grateful for your class too, they're pretty amazing. Thank you. Gratitude is a great strategy to help feed your emotional brain. It may be something you do at the end of each day, or like in the video, might be a fun activity that you can reflect on. These are just a couple of strategies to feed your emotional brain. However, there are lots and lots and lots of others that you can also use. Your challenge this fortnight is to learn and practice new emotional brain strategies that you can do when you feel like your emotional brain is trying to take control. Maybe you can set up a display in your classroom to remind you of the emotional brain strategies. 